He loves having us distracted by the things of the world. I've said this before and I'm saying it again. It's a very true statement. Satan does not need you to worship him, to feel he's achieved something. No. All he has to do is get you to worship yourself, to hold to your own abilities, your own power, your money, your guns, your weapons, your food pantries, to hold on to your knowledge, your, your reputation, your degrees, your physical strength. Rely on all the things of man, all the things that, that are part of the flesh. That's all he has to do, and he's got you. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. All he has to do is to get us to worship ourselves, and that's what 666 is, the number of man, 666, three times. We know it's the number, you know, the beast, but we know it has to do with man because it is about dominion, mankind, humankind, people being uh, dominating with their power. Bill Gates, all these atheists, and some of them are Luciferians. I don't know which ones are and aren't. They all serve Satan if they're not serving God. I do know that. If you do not belong to Jesus Christ, then you have are, you're not serving him. You can only have one master. So what I'm saying when I say this, hear me right. Bill Gates, say he's an atheist. He proclaims to be an atheist. I don't know that he does. Maybe he's a Luciferian. I don't know. But let's just say this multi-billionaire is, is, all his focus is, is that he cares about people and he wants his, the world and the earth to continue to do well. So he's going to put all this money and power and energy into all the stuff that he has with all of his money, all of his stuff, his power, his power, his dominion, his mind, his ability. Because his focus is not on anything that the Bible says. He doesn't understand that what's happening in this world right now is revelation. It's, 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 it's the prophecies coming to pass. So he's not going to be looking at it that way. And a lot of atheists, that's what they're going to be drawn to. And that is what they're drawn to. They believe in, the, they believe in knowledge. I mean, you want to go back to the Adam and Eve and all the symbols and all the different things that we've seen go on and we look at technology and how the, you know, symbol for um, my, uh, apple is, you know, the, the apple bitten out of, like, like the fruit, the tree of knowledge. It's all dependent on our abilities, man's dominion. Okay, that's what they're saying it is. There are some who openly, I mean, they, they are absolutely following Lucifer. They're Satanists to the core. They, they are doing it willingly. They're not, they're not programmed. They're very aware of it. And then there's the atheists who aren't aware that they're serving Satan because they just don't believe in anything. They don't believe in God, period. So either way, there's the reliance on their own strength. And that's all Satan's got to do. So why are we focusing on the things of this world, the fallen systems, the antichrist beast system, the systems of the world? Why are we putting so much into the political stuff and things going on with the government and concerned about our health? Why do we have to wear these masks? They don't do anything good. Why We don't need to have to do this. I have rights. Your rights? You don't have rights if you're a Christian because you're dead. Okay, dead men do not have rights. I've said this before. We're supposed to take up our cross daily and follow Jesus. We don't have rights. Our kingdom is not even of this world. So when we're fighting for our rights, that's a work of the flesh. You're fighting for your flesh to have something. It's something that your ego needs, something that your emotions need, something that your mind needs. Maybe it's something you physically need. It's, it's flesh. That's why I say, okay, I just said this. Satan doesn't need you to get focused on him and be devoted to him. All he needs to do is to get you focused on your own power and your own abilities. And he succeeded. He's done what he wants to do. He's gotten you away from God. If that's the case, which it is, if he gets us in that position, I mean, 
what I was going to say is, because you can only have one master, you're going to love one and hate the other. Jesus said it plainly. Okay, so we're looking at this. We're looking at this. We understand that there's, that, that Satan is getting us to focus on our rights and our flesh. So we can look at, when we look at the works of the flesh, we understand why it says works of the flesh and not works of the devil. Because there's what? Fruit of the Spirit. Why doesn't it say works of the devil or works of Satan or works of the Antichrist? Because with us here in this fallen world, once we have committed our lives to Jesus Christ, we are here as sojourners. We do not belong here. It's temporary. Um, we belong to another kingdom that's outside of this world. And while we're here, what we have to do daily is battle that flesh. That, that, that um, Satan's constantly trying to get us pulled back into the ways of the old man that's dead 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 okay dead to christ we are alive to jesus you know what i'm saying we're living for jesus now so what that flesh wants every day we're in that battle you know flesh or spirit what are we going to follow I think it's important that we follow God in everything from beginning to end, all right? In every area of our lives. And when, I, when I'm saying that is because I do think, I have myself, I've canned food. I've got stuff stored up. I feel like the Lord told me to do it. I'm not saying there's a problem with doing those things. What I'm saying is the problem is when people are only focused on those things. People are so, when people are scared, they're living in fear, and all they can think about is, I'm so afraid I'm going to get the virus, or I'm so afraid I'm not going to have enough food, or I'm so afraid I don't, I'm not going to have enough money. I'm so afraid I'm not going to uh, keep my job, or I'm not going to be able to go back to work, or I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid, I'm so afraid. That's focusing on the things of this world. We live in it. We have to deal with it. It sucks. Pardon my French if that offends you if I use that word, but it does. I think wearing the mask is stupid. But that's not, it's not up to me. It's, my opinion doesn't matter. What matters is me following what God says, first and foremost. And I do all things unto him. First, always, in my life. That's the way our lives should be. We are so focused on our flesh. We are Christians. It is it's easy to see why we need judgment. It's so easy to see why we need it. We are so focused on ourselves, our rights, our abilities. We can trust in God. We can. His word does not change. He doesn't change. So it doesn't matter. Maybe you can't prep because you don't have the money. You ain't got to worry about that. God knows. Let's look at all the miracles that Jesus performed. Let's look at the miracles God performed throughout the Bible. How he's fed people who are hungry, brought people back to life. <laughs> and we're going to sit around here worrying and complaining, being afraid, And never taking responsibility for our own actions or our lack of. Like I said, some people are better with masks on their face with the name of Jesus on it. Because if they didn't have that mask on, their mouth is moving, but they're not talking about Jesus. People are getting witness to more by those masks on some people than if those people didn't have those masks on. We got to get down and humble ourselves 
and repent and receive judgment and let judgment do its work in us because God does not do anything that does not turn out good and holy ever. All of the works of his hand are holy and good and right. So his judgment coming upon his people, if we follow him, if we will humble ourselves and repent and return to the Lord, we are going to be more sanctified, purified. We're going to be made better. We're going to feel better, have less fear, more peace. Freedom. You want to talk about freedom? You don't get, you know, America, we're all patriot, patriotic, you know, patriotic stuff. We're always talking about freedom, freedom. I love living in this country. And like I said, we have, we've had freedom of religion and we have squandered it. We have not used it to serve the Lord like we should and like we could have. And I love this country. I love the freedoms that I have. Believe me, I love it with all my heart. I do. I don't love the sin of it. Of course, I don't love the sin. Freedom doesn't come from being in America, though, or being an American. True freedom and liberation comes from God. That's it. If you want to be liberated, if you want to have full provision, if you want to have peace, if you want to find joy, you're, you can find it as you let God's judgment do its work in you and, you and you get down and you repent and you search your soul and you ask the Holy Spirit, show me everything. Show me what I don't want to see. Help me see the ugly parts of my own heart and soul and my lifestyle so that I can repent and change. Lord, make me holy. Make me worthy. Make me ready for the marriage Supper of the Lamb. Because we're certainly not ready right now. Lord, do a work in us where we will stop. Where we will stop avoiding. And, and so, so that we'll stop talking about all the nonsense. Lord, let me rephrase that. Lord, let your judgment do its work. Let, us, let it draw us to sharing Jesus Christ with all other people. Let it make us harvest uh, laborers, fellow laborers. Make us laborers in your harvest. Train us to reach the lost. Show us, break down in us whatever it is that keeps us from evangelizing from fulfilling the purpose that you've created us for. Let your judgment do these things. The lost, all they're going to get from God's judgment is punishment, death, pain. That's all they're going to get out of it, period. There is nothing good to come out of that. But to the person that's saved... <laughs> Yeah, it hurts, it's hard, it, it, it's difficult, but it produces fruit. What, is, what, did, what does Jesus say when he talks about we are the, um, he, is the, he is the vine, is that right? And, and we are the branches, all right? And, and if there's, a, if there's a, a branch that's not producing fruit, what happens? What happens to that? It's, um, it's pruned. Do you think pruning would feel good? No. I think I've got that right. Which ones go in the fire? Oh, yeah, then there's the ones that I think that never are producing anything, the branches. And, and those are just collected later and cast into the fire and burned. So they're going to live their full life, I guess, not producing any fruit, but they're going to end up burning the second death. While Christians who will follow him and seek him and serve him will be pruned, which is painful. 
but it happens now. It doesn't happen at the end. It's too late. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> I hope people are, are thinking and feeling conviction. I've been so convicted, I've been crying. It's just been a constant thing for me because I see all the wrong in me and I am afraid of God. I'm not afraid of man. You know, I look at the things that the things I've wasted time on in my life, excuses I make for things, and I think I have to stand before God one of these days and try to explain that. And it's gonna be very real. In that moment, it's gonna be very, very intense. And I don't want to be like that. I want to have more to say that's good. I mean, I can't change all the time that I've wasted. I can't go back and change those things. We know we can't. All we can do is repent and move forward. But we've got to repent first. We've got to see the wrong. We've got to be willing. We've got to stop complaining about what God's doing. With the use of this virus... Soul search. Ask the Holy Spirit to show us and just lead and guide us and help us. We want to reach the lost because, you know, we don't, I don't want them, you know, I don't want them going through the wrath of God. They're going to have to experience that final judgment. I guarantee you we're not going to be thinking about masks in the end when we realize We have to understand and really come to terms with the fact that there are people that do not make it into heaven. We're not going to be worrying about these kinds of things at that point. We shouldn't be now. What matters? Eternal things. We're supposed to set our mind on the things of above. Our treasure is supposed to be in heaven. Everything we do is supposed to be about God's kingdom, expanding it, reaching the lost, living holy lives loving one another, sharing with one another, encouraging one another, not competing, not focusing on ourselves and our abilities and our powers and our rights and our guns and everything else. Anyway, I think I'm repeating myself a lot. I hope this has blessed some people. I hope people will watch this video somewhere as many people as possible i'm going to pray i always pray that the right people do and i pray for every person that watches my vid video my videos i do i pray for them i'm going to end this with, like i did in my last video i think that was really important to do that and that is that jesus has told me endure that's the one thing he tells me a lot endure endure this and don't forget my words. That's what he says. Read your Bible. Repent. Think about these things. Study them out. What did Jesus do? What crime did he do? What put him on that cross? He's sinless. He wasn't a rebel, though. And what do we need to be? We're supposed to follow his example every day. We've got to follow his example. All right, endure. Jesus is coming soon, he is. Endure and, and know what Jesus taught. Don't forget the words of Jesus, amen.